So now the latest balanced data slate is revealed in full, I think it's safe to say at least a fair few armies are slightly underwhelmed. Let's talk about the reaction to the data slate, and perhaps some other changes that people really might have liked to see. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I just wanted to return to the topic of the October balanced data slate, and perhaps some of the opportunities that I feel might have been missed with trying to give 40k a bit more of a shake up in a positive direction. I think in general over the last year or so the people making the balanced data slates have done a really good job, just about every single change that they've made has been fairly positive and fairly sensible, and they also haven't really been too shy of making some big sweeping changes, things like armour of contempt or quarter loads of units, or delivering some pretty punishing nerfs to factions that were doing well. I think perhaps just given this good record, I feel that people were maybe expecting just a little bit more with nerfing the top armies of the game and buffing the weakest. Largely the reaction to this balanced data slate has been that it's just a bit lacklustre and isn't really going to change very much at all. To be fair to them, Games Workshop did publish some commentary around the entire update at the time, which I think is a really good move on their part, and they did say that they were mainly aiming just to target a few small things, perhaps the absolute top things and auto include things from some factions, and at the moment they are feeling that general game balance isn't too bad at the moment, something I would agree with broadly, but still I feel that they could be a little bit more ambitious maybe. I do get that they don't want to overcorrect and send things too far the wrong way, and they also don't want to overload people with an absolute ton of changes at the same time, but on the other hand if you are going to make changes to a system they might as well be meaningful ones, just tweaking one thing that isn't actually going to change very much just seems like it's a bit pointless to do in the first place. Overall the things that we got in the data slates were some nerfs to Tyranids, Harlequins and Necrons, and buffs to Space Marines and Admech, and broadly speaking out of that I would say that the nerfs are kind of okay by my book. I'm not sure if I actually go far enough to actually rein in Tyranids and Harlequins from being the top factions in the game, but they certainly weaken some of the strongest and most auto-include options, things like Leviathan Warriors or Light Harlequins in Star Weavers. It seems very sensible, if you're going to nerf a faction you may as well nerf the most auto-include things in it, that way you weaken the faction as a whole, and also mean that there's a lot more internal balance in the codex, so perhaps other higher fleets might have a bit more things to tempt you to them now, and Leviathan is likely to be a fair bit less dominant. Same for the Silent King really, kind of auto include before the balanced data slate. Removing core seems at least fairly reasonable, realistically I think that core mainly aims to be core squads to the army, things that you can order, and he's very much the commander and probably shouldn't have had it in the first place. In general while the nerfs seem fairly sensible, I do feel that the buffs are very lacklustre in these, kind of tiny changes to the Admech and the Marines, for the marines they did nothing besides tweak one secondary to make it usable rather than bad, and for the admech they basically made the vanguard a fair bit better, with giving them a better stratagem and improving Lucius a bit. They might well be saving some sweeping balance updates for the points updates in the next chapter approved I guess, but still it does feel really quite weak if you want to try and aim to get an around about 40% win faction into the mid tier, it just doesn't look like either of those changes are going to do that. With that in mind, I thought I might just talk about a few ways that they could potentially buff the factions, maybe some changes that have been suggested by a few people in reactions to the data slate, or things that look like they could be predictable for buffs before. For Space Marines, their faction is generally sitting at around about a 40% win rate, aside from a few special snowflake chapters which make use of great melee units, things like Dark Angel's Deathwing or Blood Angel's Sanguinary Guard. I did talk about this before in terms of data slate predictions, but if I had to make a change to Space Marines to make them stronger as a whole for a faction, I'd aim to buff Bolters, as in general it tends to be the ranged chapters that are struggling more, things like Imperial Fist, Raven Guard, or Ultramarines for example, and basically whatever flavour of Space Marines you're playing, not many people are employing Bolters as actual main damage dealers, at least not at any sort of top level competitive play. Outside from Imperial Fists, where they're incentivised a bit, Bolters as shooting units are just almost universally classed as inefficient. Things like Devastators with Heavy Bolters are kind of underwhelming. Inceptors with the Assault Bolters aren't particularly strong. And Standard Intercessors are good for holding objectives, but it still isn't exactly the Bolters that you take them for. It's more a durable troops unit that can do a bit of range, but also a bit of melee. I feel like if they'd wanted to, and they'd been a bit braver, Games Workshop could have done some sort of sweeping special rule change to make Bolters stronger for the Space Marines, perhaps in a similar sort of way as they gave the Astra Militarum auto wounds on sixes on all their ranged weapons to try and bring them a bit more in line. Still currently at time of recording, the standard Bolter is weaker than the standard Lasgun against the vast majority of targets, just because the Lasgun gets the auto wounds on sixes and the Bolter doesn't, and it does just seem a really weird state of affairs for 40k. Bolters just really should be a weapon that feels dangerous, they are basically a holy weapon with really cool shells and everything, 
and I feel like if they just wanted to make a buff for game balance, then giving bolters a bit of an upgrade would not be the worst. Probably just something simple, like say plus one to the strength of all bolt weapons across the board for Adeptus Astartes, or exploding sixes to hit might work well. I kind of feel that you might also be able to apply that sort of thing to Chaos Space Marines as well, where again it really isn't the bolters that are doing any work in the codex, it's all their melee units. I feel like if I'd had to make the change myself, I might have been tempted to make exploding sixes to hit as an option across the board for all bolt weapons, basically give every chapter the Imperial Fist main buff, and then make Imperial Fist get two extra hits on sixes rather than one, so basically they become the kings of the bolters in a class that's actually got a lot better now, rather than it's just something that's kind of underwhelming, and they're forced to make work because they don't have anything else. I feel like that sort of thing wouldn't have been overpowered, and to be honest, even that alone, I sort of wonder whether or not it would have been enough to propel Space Marines anywhere near the mid-tier rather than at the bottom tier, but at least something similar to that does feel like it could be a feel-good upgrade, make an iconic weapon a bit more dangerous, and maybe promote a little bit more game balance. I feel Space Marines just needed something a bit more meaningful than a small tweak to a bad secondary objective. Otherwise, for the Adeptus Mechanicus, what they got was their one command point enriched round stratagem going back to auto wound on fours for Vanguard, which admittedly is pretty potent, and they also got a small reversal of a nerf to Lucius, where they were prevented from getting to ludicrously high saves on their Skitari by stacking cover with their Doctrine. Reversing both of these nerfs will definitely give them a little bit more power, though I do kind of feel that it maybe just doubles down on making Skitari infantry the main stars of the show, and everything else is just a bit lackluster within the codex. I feel like getting rid of nerfs is pretty sensible, seeing as it's an army that they generally want to buff, not tone down, but I'm not sure those two options are really going to do all that much meaningful. I was kind of hoping for something a bit more of a sweeping buff to the Cult Mechanicus type units, the Catatron Servitors, the Castellan Robots, the Electro Priests and things like that. If they did just want to tune up the army a little bit, then maybe they could have done something similar with the Canticles of the Omnissiah to what they did for the Necron Command Protocols. They're basically six buffs that you can cycle through the game for. The Necrons get one that has an all game long effect, and you could maybe do something very similar for Cult Mechanicus units, say they get one Canticle all game long, which would likely either be the minus one to hit or the extra damage with the rerolls. Seems like that could be maybe quite a nice targeted buff to the Court Mechanicus units, and not just give extra power to the Skitari infantry. I feel like if you did that though, you might have to say that Mars doesn't get that bit perhaps, otherwise I guess that might be again just doubling down on making Skitari good. Another suggestion that I've seen quite a bit is making Catafron's core. In the troop section, they've basically always been underwhelming since the Codex came out now. Occasionally I have seen lists that just spam a load of Catafron breaches, and they can do okay against some things but I feel like giving them access to at least a few more buffs than the Codex would be quite nice. Again though, this might be a little bit more complicated than it seems given the Admech Codex, there might be some things that are just a little bit too overpowered if you can apply them to a big unit of Catafrons, so that might have to be looked at. Still though, putting them on a bit more of an even playing field with the Skitari troops I think could be quite useful. With the amount of crazy buff stacks Terminators that we see on the boards these days, I feel like getting some stacked buffs on Catafrons still might not be the worst thing in the world. Admittedly though, maybe something like a points drop in chapter approved might be a better option for trying to fix them. I feel like most of the Cult Mechanicus stuff is just a little bit overcosted, and still a fair bit of the Skitari as well, perhaps things like the Taraxi Skystalkers. Maybe they're just biding their time until the next points update, though again that will be another three months out. Finally, here are just a trio of little things that I vaguely think should probably be addressed at some point, though I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who can think of individual little tweaks for their own factions, it would make things a little bit more balanced and make some units a lot more interesting again. For the Adeptus Custodes, I do feel that Games Workshop could probably change around their obsec rules a bit, and maybe give Objective Secured back to the Wardens and the Alarus Custodians, basically non-character infantry. Custodes are in a bit of a weird place, they're not really struggling with win rate at all, but they feel a bit two-dimensional. Some units are good, and a lot of units are just quite bad, and often they're relying on quite a bit of Forge World. Currently the Wardens and the Alarus Custodians are kind of on a par damage and defence wise with the main troops, perhaps a little bit more efficient, but other interesting units within the army in any case. It's just a bit sad to see them basically never get played because losing obsec and not filling troop slots just makes them flat worse than the troop slot custodians, and I feel that if you did buff them in that way, you'd certainly see them on the board a bit more, but I don't honestly think that it would actually make the strength of the custodians army as a whole that much better as they'd basically just be running instead of other custodian guard squads, which were kind of fine already. I feel that could maybe just be an interesting way to make custodies a bit more of an interesting and in-depth army, without really adding all that much to their strength. 
Another thought that I saw repeated a couple of times for Gene Steeler Colt is that maybe they could think about doing something about Aberrants finally. Again, Gene Steeler Colt are maybe a bit like Custodes in that they've got a bit of a middling win rate. They do seem pretty hard to win with overall, but the occasional person has made them work. For the most part, I think their codex is actually really quite well balanced. The vast majority of their units are usable, but I do feel that maybe Aberrants are just lagging behind most of the rest a little bit. I could do with something to make them a bit more tempting. In the balanced data slate, doing something like giving Aberrants core could have been quite fun. That could allow them to get buffs from Primuses and things, as well as use a few other stratagems and options. I get that maybe they want to preserve things like Abominance and the Biophage as being the good buffing characters for them, which would make sense. So maybe something like a small points cut might be a bit better to keep them a bit more level with things like Acolytes and Pure Strains. I do quite like the big chunky mutant hammer boys, and it does feel a bit weird to have them as one of the weaker units in the codex. Finally, and just one little bugbear that Grey Knights players have that could do with addressing would be their Warlord Traits Demon Slayer. Again, Grey Knights are kind of middling in win rate. By Games Workshop standards, they're not below 45% in win rate, so don't need addressing yet according to them, though they are struggling compared with most. Regardless of whether or not they actually need a whole faction strength buff of some sort though, one thing that's really been a bit strange for them since the Demon's Codex dropped is that one of their key buffs in the Demon Slayer Warlord trait basically doesn't work. This one is Drago's Warlord trait, it gives him plus one attack and gets to ignore Demon Inball saves in combat with his big sword. Unfortunately for him though, if he does happen to be tangling with any denizens of the warp, then he'll find that the demons have moved on a bit. They don't actually have Inball saves anymore, they just have their unmodifiable demon saves, which this rule won't work against. It just seems a bit strange to have a demon slaying trait that doesn't really help you all that much against slaying the greatest demons around. Admittedly, maybe the balanced data slate is probably the wrong place for this. Perhaps it will be better off in an FAQ or errata compendium that they do release from time to time. But either way, it definitely feels like it's a rule that could do with a fix, regardless of how they choose to deliver it. So anyway, let me know what you think then. Have they gone far enough with the balanced data slate, or did they need to go further? And if you could make one or two targeted rules changes to your faction to make them a bit more balanced or a bit stronger, please let me know what you think down in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, with new ones out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that link down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.